Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome if you are new here. If you are new here then welcome, my name is Shan from Home with Shan over on Instagram and as you can probably tell from the title, I am currently 30, well I'm 31 weeks pregnant actually, but this video is going to be all about my 25 to 30 week pregnancy update and also talking a little bit about the fact that I've got Reese's negative blood and the baby has Reese's positive blood which means we are not compatible in terms of blood groups and I'm just going to talk about that a little bit, what that means, what the side effects could be but also what the preventions are and all that kind of stuff. So if any of you guys are Reese's negative and you're concerned or worried because I definitely was when I first heard of it because I didn't know what it meant, um, then yeah hopefully this will give you a bit of reassurance and just to let you know it's such a common problem that is hardly worth worrying about but obviously as long as you are taking the correct precautions and your midwives and your doctors are helping you out then yeah you haven't got anything to worry about I promise you but yeah I'll talk about the little process of what you have to have done with rhesus negative blood in a little bit. As I just said I am currently 31 weeks pregnant but let's talk about being 30 weeks pregnant because that's when everything started to change really for me. I started to feel big and I think that's fairly normal. I mean if you think about it at 30 weeks, this is according to all of my apps and everything like that, at 30 weeks the baby is estimated to weigh about three pounds and babies are estimated to put on roughly about half a pound every week for the next seven weeks so yeah we're gonna get bigger guys <laughs> the next update i will definitely be a lot bigger than i am here i haven't shown you my bump which i will do in a minute but i have to say the transition between 25 weeks and 30 weeks i feel like a lot has changed 25 weeks is like the blissful amount of weeks where you're just not that uncomfortable because you're not that big um, but you are definitely feeling kicks and movement and things like that so that's all the really good things but you um, aren't as uncomfortable and you don't have all of these third trimester things happening in your life let's talk a little bit about the third trimester so you hit the third trimester when you get to 28 weeks um, I hit 28 weeks and I had my midwife appointment which is when I got an injection for the Reese's negative blood so let me talk about that a little bit so at my 28 week midwife appointment they did all the normal stuff they checked my urine they um, took a blood test as they do every single time <laughs> and they also did my anti-D injection. So the anti-D injection is basically the thing that stops you having negative blood and your baby having positive blood being an issue. So just to talk about Reese's negative blood a little bit more in detail in pregnancy, essentially if you have a negative blood group like O negative for example, then you know that if a positive blood group enters your system, your body's gonna fight off that um, positive blood because it's different to your own. In my case my hospital were actually able to test the baby's blood, I'm not sure how they did it because I always thought you had to do it after birth, but they were able to test the baby's blood and they found out that he was Reese's positive and my blood is obviously Reese's negative. So if our bloods were ever to mix my body would produce antibodies to fight off his blood and that would not end all well. That could end in things like brain damage and also long-term learning difficulties and things like that. So it's quite important to not have those bloods mix but equally if they do mix then there's a solution which is the anti-D injection. Just to not scare you guys it is actually really really rare for one it's a matter in the first pregnancy because probably the body couldn't produce the antibodies quick enough to harm your baby however in second pregnancies or future pregnancies this could become a problem because your body could already have the antibodies that it needs to fight off a positive blood baby in the future basically um so yeah the anti-d injection is really really important because that way your body can't produce those antibodies to fight off the blood the blood mixing between the mother and the baby doesn't just happen either it happens only really during things like abdominal trauma if you were to hit your bump or fall over or something like that um, if you experience bleeding in your pregnancy um, that is a sign that it may have you know your blood your blood might have mixed with the baby's blood um, and also obviously during birth when the blood mixes a lot <laughs> 
So, you don't have to worry if you don't have any of those kind of things, but they always take the precaution to give you the anti-D injection at 28 weeks. So that way, your body definitely can't be producing any antibodies whatsoever to attack your baby's blood, and the baby will be absolutely fine. So for me personally, I had the anti-D injection actually a few weeks early because I actually had a little bit of a bleed in my pregnancy. So I went to the toilet and there was a little bit of blood, and because I'd heard about anti-D and I'd heard about um, Reese's negative blood because I was told that I had Reese's negative blood I just called the midwife just to say I know it's probably nothing because it was a very small amount of blood but I just want to come in um, want to be just monitored for a little bit and um, if I need to have the anti-D injection earlier then I will and I think it was about 26 weeks that uh, I had the anti my first anti-D injection. It was so much better to be on the safer side than the sorry side, so I definitely was happy that I had that done. I had the injection in my leg when I went there, um, and it was absolutely fine. It stings a bit. A lot of people are worried about the, I was definitely one of these people, by the way. A lot of people are worried about how much the injection hurts. And I have to say, the needle itself, nothing. It's like a normal blood test, like any other needle, it's nothing, just don't look at it. But the, anti-D going in, so it's like a solution that they inject into you obviously, and that going in, when they sort of push that in, it does sting a little bit, but at the end of the day, it's nothing in the grand scheme of things, and you really shouldn't worry about it at all, like, I've had much worse pain than that, my belly button piercing was a lot worse than that. <laughs> so yeah, after my 26 weeks when I went in with the bleed, I was absolutely fine, didn't experience any issues whatsoever, my leg was a little bit numb for like the next day or so, but other than that it was totally fine. And then at my 28 week appointment, which is when you would normally get your tw um, anti-D injection administered, had my second anti-D injection, which guys it's not that bad once i've had it once i was like okay well it's not that bad so i'll just have it again and i actually had it this time in the top of my sort of right bum cheek <laughs> because i think basically you get the option as to where you want to have it it's always in the a muscle area so you could have it in your arm you can have it in your leg you can have it in your top of your bum but essentially where you've got the most fat have it there because it won't hurt as much <laughs> so yeah top of the bum I think was the least painful the leg wasn't that painful either but I just I can just imagine that in the arm it could be a little bit more painful and I have seen a few people get like bruising and things like that but it's really not a big deal in the grand scheme of things but now I know that I definitely am not my body is definitely not producing any antibodies to fight off my baby's blood and even if our blood mixed my body has already got the administered anti-D injection. It will already be protecting my baby in that sense. If I were to have a fall or another bleed or something like that, then I would definitely still call the midwife and say, I've had my anti-D injection, but I have had a little bleed or, or something or other. And they would probably call me in to get uh, another anti-D injection. And they monitor, they take your blood basically, and they monitor how much of the baby's blood is in your system so they know how much anti-D to give you. So yeah, it is honestly not a big deal at all. But I just wanted to explain that guys, because I didn't have a clue about any of that and it would have been really helpful for me if I'd understood it as much as I do now. So yeah, that is pretty much it. I will also have to have one at birth because obviously the baby's blood and my blood will be mixing at birth because let's face it, there's a lot going on, um, and just in case I want to have another baby or another pregnancy, then my body won't have had those antibodies in place by the time I have my next baby. If that ever happens, who knows? <laughs> I just want to show you a little bump day. So this is my 31 week bump, and I definitely feel like I'm getting bigger, because like I said, three pounds roughly he is weighing, and he's about to put on half a pound a week for the next seven weeks again roughly so i'm about to get a lot bigger so i will show you what my 31 week bump looks like and then let's like update you guys as the weeks go on from here so this is at 31 weeks i do feel very large i'm not gonna lie it's um my bump is well and truly overtaken the boobs and it is um yeah it's a bit of a struggle sometimes i have to say <laughs> Just to talk about a couple of other things that have been going on between my 25 weeks and my 30 weeks of pregnancy. So one really exciting thing is we have now chosen a name for the baby. So a full name, we know exactly what he's going to be called. We already had a first name pretty early on, but 
we now have a second name and obviously the last name as well. I can tell you the last name. The last name will be Robinson because that's my partner's last name. But other than that, I'm not going to tell you guys just yet what his name is. Just because I really don't want anyone to ruin it for me. You know when you've got a name in your head, it's so perfect. And then you hear someone say something negative about it. Um, I just really don't want that to happen. So once he's here and he's named that and he's on the birth registry, then I will announce it to the world and not give a crap what anyone thinks but it's just beforehand I don't want any of those negative thoughts coming into my brain I'm very very happy with the name it's a really meaningful name for us and I absolutely love it a couple of things that I've been struggling with in the third trimester specifically is definitely sleeping sleeping is hard guys especially because it's hot in the evenings and now Ash is back I'm obviously back sharing a bed which I wasn't doing before which was I have to say a lot better when I wasn't sharing a bed because I was I had my pregnancy pillow which I'm looking at over there um and it was just so comfortable I had the whole bed to spread out on and now I'm sharing a double bed with a person and a pregnancy pillow which doesn't always work but he is very good at letting me sort of spread out if I need to but yeah sleeping is not the easiest I, I'm getting up in the night to go to the toilet which is so normal um, and also down to get a drink and things like that but it is what it is it's just very hot very uncomfortable and as you get bigger it just becomes even more uncomfortable I'm told so that's fab <laughs> yeah it's a little bit of a struggle I mean getting up and down the stairs doing anything at, at pace is just not happening anymore so yeah it is like I'm taking my time with everything, doing the housework and things like that. I'm definitely doing it at a very leisurely pace, not putting any pressure on myself to get a certain amount of jobs done in a day. It's just not practical anymore. So yeah, it's all about slowing down, I think, in the, le in the next 10 weeks or nine weeks. God, that's even scarier. <laughs> I definitely, definitely, definitely have the pregnancy waddle, which is not cute, but it is essential to walk comfortably. Otherwise, you just yeah you're not comfortable at all so i do look a bit funny when i'm walking up the stairs i'm not gonna lie especially in a maxi dress which is what i'm wearing today so yeah i will not be showing you that guys <laughs> the usual things are like heartburn are giving me grief but i have to say it's a lot better since i've been drinking a lot more milk i've mentioned this so many times in my pregnancy videos in my second trimester must have video i definitely mentioned this and probably previously to that as well but milk has been my lifesaver i've never liked milk ever but it is just, I'm just absolutely obsessed with it at the moment. I drink normal glasses of milk. I'll have it, loads of milk in my cereal. Yeah, it's just helping me massively. So I'll have two bottles of water before a meal and then I'll have my meal and then I'll have a glass of milk afterwards as well. It's really strange, but it just really helps me. Along with the old favourites like a Rennie tab and also some Gaviscon or something along the lines like a cheaper version of Gaviscon is always good as well. The last thing, and I have left this to last on purpose because a lot of people will have clicked off this video by now and only the people that really need to know will find this out um, and it is basically the worst thing probably the most embarrassing thing um that's happened in my pregnancy so far and i was walking up the stairs the other day and i just had a little bit of a cough walking up the stairs had a cough <coughs> what happened we incontinence guys I never thought I would be saying that at the age of 22, but I wet myself because I coughed, because I couldn't hold it in anymore. Um, yeah, very embarrassing, but you know what? It's the realities of pregnancy, and if you can't get away with it then, then when can you, I guess? That pretty much wraps up my 25 to 30 week pregnancy update, along with some of the details about my experience with having Reese's negative blood during pregnancy. Um, and I hope it's been really helpful for you guys if you guys are Reese's negative or if even if you're not and you're just interested in that kind of thing then I hope that's been helpful. Any further comments about the Reese's negative stuff, list them down below. If you have any tips or helpful information for people, I'm sure people would absolutely love to see it so he's definitely commenting them down below. I would love to see it myself as well. Um, but yeah, for now, I will love you and leave you and see you in the next video guys. Love you lots. Bye. Mm -hmm.